Hello, I'm Nigel Gravis. Welcome back to this Hardware Management Console Enhanced Plus Graphical User Interface Live Demo. In part two then we'll be looking at some common features that are available on lots of different views. Filters, views, pins, tasks and some extra advanced options. Across the top in here we have a common features that are available in, in lots of different places. and We could look at those uh, very briefly now. Uh, first of all, we've got a filter idea. So, um, in this case, I've only got nine machines. But if we were looking at you know 200 uh, logical partitions, it can be very difficult to find the which one you want. I know some customers have um, their LPAR names are like all zoned up, so the first three digits mean which computer room it is, and the next three digits is what sort of computer it is, and the next three, and all sorts of things. So you can just rather than looking for a long long list of things, you can actually just search for it. Now in my case, I want to say, let's go to the Lime machine, let's type it in, and that's the only one left. Um, if you want to get out of this, I could either delete this in here, or if I come, come back, this is what the little X is for at the end here, you can do it in one click. Uh, takes in, takes less time, but there we go. Um, now we can also uh, look at uh, different things, at the moment you're gonna, it's going to be looking at all the attributes of these, in this case systems, could be LPARs or virtual I/O servers. There's a whole bunch of different things that it's actually looking at in here. So, if the thing that you type in uh, appears anywhere, it's going to be um, in uh, one of these. And so we could actually look at um, a machine type. So we could put in a machine type model, for example, and it go and uh, find one of our machines. Um, the alternative is we could do things like um, just look, do wildcode or even look at the descriptions. I know if I've got a machine here called Emerald, but I, I made a, a change. And if I actually spell that right, Emerald, then it actually says, here's my Emerald machine, but it's also showing me a Ruby machine. And uh, that's because I put um, I like emeralds in the description of this machine and it's looking at the, the names uh, in here and uh, also it's looking at the description and it's found that emerald was in the description. Now you could actually use that feature by carefully putting what's in the description have different uh, fields that you can go and look at here maybe um, you put in DB2 or Oracle or whatever database you have in the description of the server if that's what the machine is about and then in here you could type Oracle and it go and find all the machines that have Oracle in the description. In this case, if I wanted to actually find just the line machine, I could just say zoning in, looking, look at the name, and then here's Emerald. Or if I was want to find the other machine, look at its descriptions, there's only one that actually has Emerald written into it. Well, that's a sort of funny case, just to prove the point. I wouldn't put that as uh, recommended. But normally you have all columns in here. So we'll come out of in here. This one in here is that if you have a new machine in your computer room, then you want to... Uh, Ask the HMC to adopt it, connect to it, and you'll have to type in the uh, the passwords, and then you'll have access to the new machine. And you you do this, you click on this guy here, and it will bring up a, a panel on here. And this is exactly the same as it is in the classic that we've had for years. Um, now I would like to highlight one little point in here. We have a black edges in here in the Enhance Plus in the classic it's sort of a, a mottled dark blue and I suggested to the the team HMC developers that if they made the colors the same it would look like it's the uh, same generation and so there it is there's uh, one big massive impact that I've had on the HMC I like to uh, highlight these things now over here we have, if you hover over it, this is the, called the gallery view of pictures of the machines in here. You can actually see that some of them have changed. Um, in here, this is uh, an S822 and it is a smaller machine than S824. So these are different pictures in here. This is an E850. Um, I guess it could be right. I'll have to go and check my, my machine. Some of the older ones seem to be just a sort of generic looking uh, server in here. Um, I have to go actually have a look at my uh, E880 to see if there's a picture difference for that one. Now if, if we click on here we have table view and this is a bit more like the view that you get on the classic version. Um, only it's a, it's a bit better. I've limited myself to 
1180 pixels across in here, so I usually have a much bigger screen than this, but I've got a big scroll bar in here, so there's a bunch of things that we can actually see in here. Um, and I've only got nine servers. If we were looking at LPARs, you might have 100 or so, and they'll fall off the bottom. You can say whether you want to show 20 on a page, 30 or 50 um, on a page, and then you'd have one, two, three, four, or something in here for the different pages. Um, I've got nine, so even going to 10 won't get me a second page. I'll have a look at that again when we get to the uh, virtual machines. Um, so we can actually uh, shrink a couple of these in, but they're not, not, not all of them. They don't go very small, and we can scroll over in here. But you can actually control what you want to, to know in here. The, the number of partitions, well, that's interesting. Him and Ruby's got 13, and Emerald's got 10. Um, the 10 in Emerald in here, the processor usage is a lot more use in here than my Ruby machine. Maybe I should move some LPARs from Emerald to uh, Ruby. Over here we've got memory use, um, Peach, so that's Gareth's machine, he's got a lot of memory allocated, that's good for him. I've got plenty of memory to allocate in my uh, Power 8 machines in here. We've got network and storage as well over here. Uh, this is uh, usage. If we see this little button in here, um, you know, click on it and you get, whoa, look at that. Maybe you don't want to know about the attention LEDs because we can see that in the uh, gallery view easy enough. A uh, number of partitions isn't that interesting. Uh, maybe you want to know about the machine type in here. Um, and there's some more information down in here. Network users, we've got that. Uh, processes, process alls installed and uh, available maybe two columns we want so we can say oh look this machine line's got 18 cpus that aren't isn't actually in use that, that's worth putting some extra lpars onto that one next uh, then perhaps move into the ruby now that, that's pretty good and we can select what we want in here on a wider screen you can have more of those uh, concurrent at the same time also when we're in this view there's a little button up in here. I thought this was part of this pin operation that we'll look at in a second. Here, we've got a whole bunch of fantastic things, and I only discovered this yesterday. <laughs> um, so there we go. Uh, it's, it's, it's fun when you investigate a new bit of the interface and you think, whoa, I never knew that. Look, we've got export in here, and uh, CSV. And in my browser in here, it sent me a comma-separated values file. If I double click on that, it starts up Excel. Oh, God, this is massive. Okay, bring it on here. And so the information I can see on the screen is all in Excel, of course, if you're running a different operating system, uh, other spreadsheet vendors are, are available. But anyway, um, that's quite a nice little asset. You know, I just want to save that information. I want to send this to Bruce, remind him that, uh, I don't know, whatever it was, uh, we've got 18 CPUs on the... Uh, this machine in here called uh, Lime. Uh, maybe that's the next place we should put something. Okay, uh, no, I won't save that. So that's a, a pretty good usage in there, isn't it? There's other things in here. Um, we could do um, open a new tab. I didn't actually think this was possible, but there we go. If we click on that one, on the top in here, I've got a new tab. It's going to regenerate uh, exactly the same page in a second. Okay, so it's got the same thing. I can go back to my old one in here and switch that back to gallery view. And now with my tabs, I can flip between uh, spreadsheet and gallery views. So you haven't got the tabs in the picture in here. I didn't want to waste the real estate. Okay, so that's some of the things in here. A pop-out will produce you uh, like a like a new browser any page but it doesn't have a tab so it just appears let me do that um, and make it a bit smaller in here again it will take a little while to come up and um, so it, it doesn't have any um, tabs or anything it's just a single function if you like uh, in here we can move around inside this um, if you wanted to it takes up less space on the screen um, but uh, up to you I'm not sure if I'd find that particularly useful but Somebody might do. Uh, printing, well, that's pretty dumb. Um, <laughs> pretty boring, um, unless you want to print out an exact copy of the page to a printer um, or take an image of it in a PDF or something like that. Okay, so that's these two in here. Oh, I'll go back to my other tab for my spreadsheet mode. What did it call it? 
table mode, table view, and we have another one in here called relational, which is a bit grand for what you get. If we click on that one, this takes a little while because it says for each machine it's going to show you the LPARs on that machine, so it's producing quite a lot of information in one go. Give it a little second, there we go. So on my bronze Power 6 machines, it's only got one VO server. Um, we have to do that because um, it hasn't got enough adapters and it's only got 4 CPUs and 16 gig of RAM. So it's, it's not really got the power to run two VO servers and it's got a couple of um, LPARs already uh, running on it. I've got a bunch of these other in here. Let's scroll down to a sort of bigger machine. It's Peach, it's Ruby, my 850. And so we have uh, Ruby in here and um, I can click on that and drill down into it. And these are all the LPARs uh, actually running on it in here. Okay, uh, most of the time I, I don't go into these views. It'd be good if I want to compare columns and things to check consistency, for example, in here. But I spend most of my time in the uh, gallery view as I'm going to select a machine and then decide what I want to do with it. Uh, and that's the um, slightly different paradigm to the classic view, which you tend to say, I want to do an update. And it says, update what? And we tend to say, we want to we find the resource we want and then we apply a, a verb to it um, so we do this machine update it to update the system firmware as an example okay up the top here and um, we've got a general search in here so if I somebody says look there's something wrong with the the red thingy I could type in red in here and it says there's a system called red and there's a virtual IO server called red another one might be uh, Ruby. In this case, I've got a, a system called Ruby. I've got a partition called Ruby Backup, and I've got four VO servers um, in on that particular machine. So that helps me find particular things across all the different resources, rather than the filter in here is going to filter the resource that I'm looking at. In this case, uh, systems. Okay, now the, the, mostly the, the general things going on in here. Um, over here we have pins. So if I create a particular view that I like, um, I'm not doing anything uh, in particular. I could just use the one I have here. Now let's go for the uh, spreadsheet view. If I hit this little pin in here, it's going to take this view that I'm looking at and save it over here in my list of pins. I've already done this once I think today, so if I just hit the pin option, it will think about the context that I've actually got there and add it to you know, all systems resources. So now I could uh, click on one of these, for example, um, it says in here, uh, this is my Ruby machine, so if I click on that, it takes me straight to uh, Ruby and the partitions and if I click on all systems here the one I just created it should take me back to that uh, particular place and it could be quite specific if I'm looking at a particular LPAR for example then it would take me straight to that LPAR not these general pages that I've got at the top in here um, okay and there's a few things you can do with your pins you can export them if you want to put them onto a different machine for example uh, min and maximize them, uh, restore them, bring them, uh, import them, and uh, resize. I'm not quite sure what that does. I uh, use that as an exercise to the student to resize the top and bottom. Okay. Now, um, that probably allows me to do things like this, bringing these uh, up and down. Okay. Um, let's try again. Bring that up. Good. That's pins. Uh, tasks, when I do things, um, some of them will actually sit there and wait until it's finished doing them, and some of them it will just throw it into the background, and it, you know, I can go and have a look at the results later on. So if I get a green in here, these are the previous things that I've done. I activate the partition, create a partition, save a copy of something. Um, and they're, they're all greens. This is my past activities list in here. So click back through here. Remember I do crash and burn and I deliberately do some things wrong and oh here we are, activated a partition and for some reason, oh well, that was one that didn't have an operating system in it. Well that was bound to fail wasn't it? Uh, in actual fact it failed nastily. The operating system wouldn't actually uh, install. So there's an example of a failure. So that's, I've got five failures in my list of things that I've done and this one in here is that there's an ongoing um, activity that's still running. 
and we can bring it up in here activate partition and whatever happened to that it did never actually finished so um, I can investigate that further at some other time okay now this is taking up some real estate in here so it is useful and it's good to see what's going on here sometimes this little piece in here um, will pop up at the bottom when it's telling me that uh, you know certain things have changed or have uh, finished and they're green or red it'll actually pop up and then disappear as a reminder if we look about here we can see there's a little grey button in here with an arrow on it um, it's a little bit difficult to see if I click on that it shoves it over to the sideboard and give me some extra screen space to do things I can see a few more columns in here for example one last feature I skipped this little button in here's a plus sign in here really advanced filtering and it does mean it uh, this filter can look at all attributes or one in here we can run uh, this advanced multiple attributes at the same time so we could eliminate uh, searching in here for uh, particular machines that are like powered off or have been disconnected from the HNC we could do things like uh, find all machines with more than um, 25 CPUs and that would eliminate the scale out machines for example um, or we could look at ones with that has uh, processors available maybe we're looking for something that has all the machines with more than 50 CPUs available and maybe we also want it to have more than 128 gigabytes of RAM well, that's installed and we could look up the memory uh, available as well and we could apply those two things at the same time now I haven't got any machines like that at all so they all disappear um, but if we reset those we can take those out now if you don't find the column you want in here if you click on this little down arrow there's a whole bunch of other columns and um, so there's a whole bunch of things uh, in here on the list you may find I've got limited number of pixels as we said before so if we take off some things out of this list um, so yeah, if we take off the attention and the reference codes and then the number of partitions and the number of VAO servers, then we should be down to the ones we actually want. I've got processor usage and memory usage. I was actually after installed and installed. Okay, so I'm looking for 50 CPUs installed and 128 gigabytes of RAM. Nope, none of those either, so I haven't got enough CPUs. Uh, 20 CPUs. Okay, and that's telling me that Ruby and Lime uh, are the biggest machines I've got in terms of CPUs and memory. I'll leave it as an exercise for you to decide what you can do. Once you know that it is there, you may actually find a particular use for you to do that. If you hit the reset and close, that will get rid of it. Alternative is that you get a little minus sign in here. That puts it away. Well that's the end of part two, part three is the main menu tour.